Hey all, Johnny Edward coming to you from my studio at Elie Alchemia in Denver, Colorado. For those of you who may not be familiar with me or my work, I'm an editorial portrait and fashion photographer, art director, and creative educator. Today we're going to be exploring two of Nanlite's latest offerings from their FS series of lights, the 300B and the 60B. Suffice it to say, there's a lot to love about these lights, but rather than talk to you about them, I want to show you how I'm integrating them into my creative workflow to create the sets, scenes, and narratives that I've become known for. I am so excited to share this experience with you, and hopefully you walk away not only with more knowledge, but feeling inspired to get into your own creative space and make some art of your own. Let's get to it. So for this look and scene, what I was really thinking about is a lot of color cohesion. I'm very driven by old world painterly work. And so we have Melanie in this stunning dress with this hand painted backdrop. That's one of my favorites in the studio. We have really great tonal cohesion. And in terms of lighting, what we're working with right here is the FS300B, and that's paired to the 120 Deep Octabox. Now this is one of my favorite modifiers from Nanlite because it's a very painterly quality of light and that we get soft light, but it's also very sculptural. So we're gonna see this in action in a moment here, we're gonna get a fan going and play with some very editorial fluidity. Editorial fluidity, we're rolling with this. And we're just gonna see how it goes, all right. So our light set up, Melanie looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna get a couple of test frames real quick. Yeah, you can just kind of like sway and move around, very ethereal and soft. Beautiful. This light looks absolutely incredible, gorgeous, gorgeous. And what I'm thinking is let's actually turn the fan on. Sorry everyone for picking up this fan noise but it's going to be worth it for the effect here. And especially with how this dress moves and her hair, it's just gonna make this whole thing feel so much more dynamic. Beautiful. I'm already loving these frames. Gorgeous. That's beautiful. And let's even bring some of that hair on this side of your face to see if we can get it blowing across your face. So, I don't know, your hair's so, yeah, 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 that's gorgeous, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe too much. Now we have a mustache. <laughs> perfect, perfect, that's, that's amazing. Just like that, love it. Stunning, right there, beautiful. That deep breath in and exhaling. Gorge, 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 gorge. Oh yeah, these are great. These are wild. I'm so stoked. Yes, killing it. So one of the things that I really love about all of these FS series lights that have the B designation is the fact that they're bi-color, which means we can go all the way from 6,500 Kelvin down to 2,700 Kelvin. Not only does, it, does this give us a lot of creative freedom in terms of the color of our light on our set, but if you need to match your light to environmental light, such as lamps, natural light coming through the windows, or anything of that sort, you have the opportunity to do that, and not only do it, but do it remotely from the NanLink app. So I can control all of my light groups and lights independently directly from this, and I can also control the dimming seamlessly from 100% down to 0% in 1% increments. So having the capacity to do this, especially for groups of lights from this app, is huge. And having that option to tune the light from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin is huge. Really, really wonderful features on all of these lights. So for this look, as is the case for most of my looks and a lot of my work, I'm once again going for those painterly vibes. To that end, this time we have the FS300B paired with the 80 centimeter lantern. So what I really love about this modifier is it's omnidirectional, which means the light is pouring out in all ways. So it feels very natural, very much like a window light. And back here we have the FS60B paired to the Fresnel modifier, which allows us to not only focus the light, but also shape it very effectively. In this case, we're using it for this very lovely ethereal rim light light on Melanie. So I'm just going to shoot some frames here and see how it's looking. Gorgeous right there. 
Beautiful. How classic this looks. Love that vibe. Stunning. Right there is gorgeous. And so let's stay there for one second. Let's go back to where you just were with head this way. So the one thing I am gonna watch out for when I'm shooting this though is since I'm working with this backlight, when Melanie turns her head in, we start getting these hard shadows. So I love her position here, but it really doesn't work with this light. So we're just gonna bring your chin back around this way and even a little bit more so we're not getting the shadow from the hair right there, great. And I'm just gonna cinch this back a smidge. So now we're keeping that beautiful soft light on her face and right through me, gorgeous. Right there is amazing. To come back, I wanna get this whole scene because it's an amazing dirty frame. Very editorial. So we wanted to go with something really classic. We styled with some pearls. Some of these are real, some of them are not. I bet you can't tell which is which. Um, for the lighting, what we did was he actually put that 48 inch deep octa paired to the FS300B above and behind the backdrop. And my thought process was almost like evening light. So we have that warm sunset light coming over the backdrop and then we're just gonna bring a kiss of light in here with the FS60B paired to this adorable 60 inch deep octa that we have a grid on to make sure that we're keeping some of that extraneous light off the backdrop. Uh, we just did a couple of test shots and it looks amazing, so we're gonna go through some flow here. Um, I just want you to be regal and wonderful, so be yourself. And so let's almost go into like the contemplative bride-to-be, like you're not quite sure. <laughs> like, you might not be that into them, that type of thing. Perfect, yep, love the softness here, gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna stay right there. And with her head in this position, I'm just gonna bring this light around a bit so we have a tad more drama and more shadow on that short side again. Very classical lighting pattern. Lots of drama, but it's still very soft. Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. So we're still working with the same look, the vintage dress, the pearls, that whole ethereal kind of vibe. But what we've done is we've taken the 120 centimeter Octa that's paired to that FS300B and we're now using it for backlight and for the backdrop. So it's gonna look very almost ghostly, ethereal, soft. This isn't a way that I normally shoot, but I wanted to get some frames just experimentally. Um, and I'd really encourage all of you out there, whatever kind of lights you have, to take the time to experiment and explore because that's how we grow and evolve and become better at our craft, if that's something you're looking to do. Anywho, what we're doing here is just bringing that FS60B with the 60, 60 centimeter, pardon me, octa, and we're just putting a little bit of kiss of light to the front here so that it's not a silhouette. And so we're gonna wind up with an image that's very soft, but also very punchy. And so that's what I like, is soft and contrasty at the same time. I'm, I'm complicated like that. But these look glorious. I'm gonna get one big behind the scenes shot here because I love these frames. And I wanna show you all what this setup looked like off of a still too. So one thing that I did wanna to mention too as I'm getting these lights set up for this next look is obviously we're using these lights that you're seeing in the scenes but we're also getting some incidental fill because there's other lights in here that are on for production and we also have natural light coming through the windows. So when you're lighting your scenes, just be sure to be aware of all of the light sources the intensity of those light sources and the color temperature of those light sources, uh, just so you can get consistent results. And sometimes it helps to have fill. Obviously, if you want something really moody, that fill can ruin the scene for you. So just take the time, look around. Where's the light coming from? What's it doing? Get a vibe for it. Go from there. So what we're working with right now is the FS60B singularly on this set. I paired it with my absolute favorite modifier for this light and that is the PJ projector. This specific projector has a 36 degree lens. There's also a 19 degree lens available. But essentially what this allows you to do is shape and craft light with a great deal of precision. You get to decide what type of patterns you wanna project onto your subject and you also get to decide the sharpness of the shadows in those projections. You can use it purely as a circle or use the leaves 
to create shape, or use gobos, which you can also get from Nanlite, which project different patterns. There is so much creative levity with this and literally infinite possibilities. So what we're doing right now is we're actually gonna project a pattern onto Melanie, and what I'm looking for is something akin to natural dappled light. So I have something in here, and it's kind of like a foliage type of gobo, and we're just gonna play with the sharpness to decide how sharp we want that to be so that it feels organic. The one thing to be aware of is obviously if you step in front of your subject, you're going to block your light. So you just have to be really mindful of where you're at in your frame. That's great, Melanie, just right through me from there. Perfect, love it. Ooh, and let's even lean forward a little. And as a par right there, and so we just had Melanie lean a little bit further forward. So now her face is breaking out of those shadows into the light. This is gonna be really moody, really dramatic. Obviously, this isn't applicable for everything, but right now this works great. We have our super moody princess vibes, queen vibes, sorry. <laughs> love it. Stellar, love your mood here. Perfect. <clears throat> so, um, one thing about these lights is they tend to be very popular with videographers or cinematographers, but not so much with photographers. And I get the question a lot, why are you using constant lights instead of strobes? And the number one reason is because it's what you see is what you get. I love working with shadows. And now, Melanie, turn your chin toward me a little. We can see how that Rembrandt light is, <laughs> Rembrandt light is coming through. And keep turning this way, chin's gonna come up. And we're adjusting those shadows and the dimensionality in real time. If I was using a strobe, even if I had a decent modeling lamp, I'm not going to be able to see the output of the light on her face. So every time I take a shot, I'm gonna have to look at the back of my camera, or I'm gonna have to look at my screen if I'm tethering and then make adjustments. And then if I turn away and Melanie brings her chin back to the right, and I go to take a frame, now I have to start that process all over. So it allows me to stay very connected with who I'm working with and make sure that the shadows and the dimensionality in my scenes are perfect so that I'm bringing my vision to life in the most efficient and effective way possible. And I'm just lazy, so there's that too. But really it's about this. I get to see what I'm working with in real time, and I just get to focus on connecting with the person in front of my lens, and for me, that's priceless. So that's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am beyond excited about what we created. I hope that you walk away from this not only with a better understanding of what these lights are capable of, but feeling inspired to produce some art of your own. Never stop creating. Art is life and life is art. I'll see you next time.